What's up guys, it's River and today we're doing a tutorial on the Sony A6000 showing you how to get the most value for your money out of this camera, showing you how to get the best photo quality, video quality, how to really hone that focus mode, plus a bonus tip that only someone who's been using Sony cameras for a really, really long time would know. Without further ado, let's get into it. Also, just to let you guys know, there's a link in the description down below for the absolute best pricing on this camera, so if you guys are interested, be sure to check that out. Hey guys, so here we are with this Sony A6000 and the first thing I'm going to show you guys is how to set up this camera optimally for photo. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that this top dial right here is set to M. Now if you just want to point and shoot and not have to think about settings, green, this little green camera or this gold icon is great for auto modes. But if you want to have control and you know, clearly you're watching this video so you can have control, you want to make sure this is set to M which stands for manual. So once in manual exposure, you want to go to menu and you want to look at this right here image size aspect ratio and quality will come up so first thing you want to do is you want to make sure your aspect ratio is set to three by two this gives you a taller image and ultimately just gives you more photo sites on your sensor and thusly giving you more of your camera sensor now you want to go into quality and depending on what you plan to do with these photos if you're going to be shooting for a client or you're going to be doing some heavy editing with these photos i would shoot in raw but sometimes you want to shoot RAW and JPEG if you want to be able to do um, heavy editing afterwards. But you also know you want to be able to share these photos just on the fly. Or if you want to just have them on your phone somehow later, go with JPEG. But if you don't plan to do any editing and or just very minimal editing, I think if you go with Fine, it should be totally okay. Like Fine is fine, haha. But Fine is just a JPEG and that will allow you to save a lot of space but also like this is for if you're not going to be uh, uh, doing the heavy editing and also because raw is something that's not recognized by every phone or by every kind of computer well depending on what software you have but raw is more of like a professional file format and fine is just something you can easily share with everybody it's very easy to take the fine the fine jpegs throw them onto your computer and then airdrop them to your family and friends or email them where raw takes up quite a bit of space and whoever is getting those raw files will need the specific software to open up that raw file. So depending on what you're using, um, you know, pick wisely. But generally for me, I shoot raw and JPEG always. I have a 64 megabyte, megabytes card and gives me plenty of room on that card. Also, when you're shooting JPEGs, you want to look at this. Uh, large will give you 24 megapixels, medium 12, six, uh, small is six. You always want to shoot on 24 megapixels because there's honestly generally no reason to sacrifice resolution in JPEGs, especially because JPEGs are pretty small anyways. Unless you're like really, really tight on space and you plan to shoot like thousands and thousands, yeah, just shoot on 24. This way you're getting the most data and the most out of your camera. All right, guys. And the other thing now I want to show you guys is how to set this up ideally for f video. Now you want to go to the top and you don't want to make sure you don't shoot video in this M mode. You actually want to make sure you go over to this film strip icon, which actually... Is for video and this will a just kind of set everything up for video and it will show you a better uh, better preview for what your video will look like so when in video you want to do a couple things you want to go into this menu again and you want to pick your file format you want to make sure you pick in you pick XAVSC this will give you the best bit rate the most information and you can really edit your stuff later if your image is a bit dark you will have enough information to make it brighter if it's a bit dark you can always make it brighter but you'll just get a higher megabit rate and ultimately you'll get more information better image quality if you are very very tight on space you can shoot an mp4 i wouldn't recommend avchd it's kind of a tricky format and unless you're planning on delivering for tv i wouldn't really mess with it but xavsc is in my opinion about as good as prores though prores is the ultimate if you don't know what that is don't worry uh, this is just techie nerd talk, but XAVSC is generally what you want to shoot in. And then if you go to the right a few times, you'll see record setting. Now, 60 FPS is very, very important for if you're shooting slow mo. I tend to shoot all of my stuff in slow mo in 60 FPS, and I slow stuff down. Most of my work uses slow mo. But if you're planning to shoot something cinematic, and or you just don't want to bother with the, or you like the motion blur. Of 24 fps you can go with real time which is 24 fps and again tv delivery is generally in 30 but i would go with 60 fps for most stuff because this is not the kind because of the lack of audio inputs on this camera so you can see it's just got an hdmi and whatever you're not getting audio so generally you're probably not shooting 
for narrative or like interviews. And you know, if you are, uh, good luck with that sound sync. But generally I go with 60 FPS. And next, if you go a little bit more to the right, I wish this menu was easier to find and just easier to get to, you'll get to creative styles. Now what I do is I shoot everything in neutral for when I plan to uh, color correct. And there's a bunch of styles in here as you can see, but uh, I find neutral works best for when I plan on doing some heavy color grading afterwards. Now, if you hit right on your thing, you'll get to, con you'll see contrast, saturation, sharpness. What I like to do is I like to put my sharpness to negative one, my saturation to negative three, and my contrast to negative three as well. Now, these are the settings that I've kind of found on the internet to be ideal. A lot of editors I work with really like the setting. And this is for people who really want to color grade their footage after. If you don't plan to, go with Vivid. Vivid automatically kind of, uh, let me actually adjust this camera here for a second. What you'll actually notice is Vivid has this really cool look to it where it automatically saturates all the colors for you. So let's get back into it. But Vivid will generally kind of saturate the colors for you. Neutral will give you a very, very flat profile as you can see. But Vivid will automatically saturate the colors for you and really make them pop. So it'll kind of save you that time in Instagram or post editing if you don't want to be doing that kind of stuff. Personally, I like to color correct. But Vivid is best. Uh, standard, it's a little too flat for me. And Deep is also kind of nice, but sometimes it can be a bit over wearing. Play around and, you know, Use your best judgment based on where you are. But Vivid just really, I love the ways the blues pop on Vivid. All right, guys, next I want to talk about focus mode. And focus mode can be a bit of a tricky subject. So uh, I hope I make sense and I'll try to go slow. So if you hit this F FN button right here, it'll take you into the function menu. And now what you want to do is you want to go into focus mode here. And you'll see a bunch of focus mode. Single shot is where uh, if I pick single shot, it'll kind of just pick a focus and then it'll kind of stick to it. It'll stick with that uh, focus length. Sorry, um, wherever it's kind of set the focus. Automatic is where it will kind of stick with you. If I pick this right here, if I pick automatic, it will start to kind of just kind of go with whatever you're there. And you can't see it on camera, but as I kind of go in and out with this picture, it'll figure out what it needs to get in focus and it'll kind of track with you. But what I prefer the most over automatic is actually, uh, just because I took photos just now, it's uh, kind of giving me, it's doing stuff. I actually like continuous autofocus because what it will do here is it will continuously track things. As you can see, there's these little tiny squares that will pop up on focus mode, right those in the middle. What continuous does is it automatically tracks what kind of focus it needs to be in. So automatic, it will pick something and just kind of track with it. But continuous AF will constantly be looking at what needs to be in focus and then also like what kind of focus mode it should be in. This is like the most intelligent focus mode I find. So generally I will shoot in this, but also depending on situation, like I tend to do shoot a lot of fashion. So if I know I'm gonna get a still, still model and I know I'm not gonna be shooting in a high drive mode, I will generally just stick to single autofocus. It can be a bit confusing picking out what the best focus mode is, but I recommend you try it out. I my general rule of thumb is if you know you're getting someone that's still and not moving a lot, single. But if you know your uh, focus people are gonna, whatever you wanna keep in focus, like for sports or something fast moving, I would go with continuous because it will keep tracking and just keep figuring out what the best way to catch focus is. Um, and also there's right next to it is a little thing called area focus mode. Now, if I'm gonna go back to M here for a second. Yep, I'm already in M. But if you look right here, it there's focus areas and now you will, it'll give you options of how you wanna be uh, looking at your focus. So wide, it'll kinda of just look at the entire frame. That can be a bit confusing because sometimes there's things in your shot that you plan to Photoshop out later and it'll catch things that don't need to be in focus. I prefer zone. What that does, it looks at different zones on your sensor and will just kinda of focus in those areas. I tend to keep my zone in the middle. It's a pretty wide area. And I'm just like, yep, that's where I wanna be. And if you're doing like maybe product shots, center is pretty good because it will just pretty much focus on whatever's in the center. We'll ignore everything around you and it'll just focus on center. It's a bit tricky with my Blade Runner poster because it also does face tracking here. But generally I find for my rule of thumb is product shots, center, 
uh, everything else, zone. And you can pick wherever you're, you prefer your zone to be. And now lastly, I hope I've been doing a good job with this tutorial. I wanna talk about drive mode. Now there's different drive modes for different situations. Single shooting, you know, if someone's not moving around a lot, I'll go with the single shot and just kind of really get them in the right pose and then just like take a photo. And you know, just depends. And you know, if, I'm, if my product's not really moving too much, like especially for product photography, single mode is totally fine. But you know, sometimes with models, they're kind of running between different looks. If I'm shooting sports, I'm running between different looks. For that, I like to use my continuous shooting. And now continuous shooting, it comes in three flavors, high, medium, and low. Now, what I find is high is just way too many frames. It's way too fast. Like I love the fact that this thing is a machine gun. Unless I'm shooting like basketball games or like intent, high intense sports, I'm not shooting in um, high mode because it's just way too many files at the end of it. It's just a chore to go through all of them. I find medium and low works the best. Like low, you'll kind of get, and this works pretty good for models and medium, it's a bit faster, but you know, high is just way too much. So depending on how fast your subject's moving, I would switch between medium and low, but generally those are the two focus modes that everyone should kind of be using. In the rare case that you want to set up your camera for something, there's a self timer for 10 and 30, and you can actually kind of go between them and you'll get different self timers. This is a fun thing to work around. And if you guys are interested, leave me a comment down below and make a video just about self timers because you can do some really interesting work with uh, time photography if you want to shoot yourself, especially for the Instagram influencer audience I have. All right, guys, thank you for sticking with us so far. Now, the last tip that I have is a bonus tip that only someone who's been using Sony cameras for a really, really, really long time would know. And that's about how to expose best for a Sony camera. Now, the way a sensor works is that it has a certain amount of dynamic range where like it sees a certain amount of information in your shadows and a certain amount in your highlights. The way Sony cameras are built is that they're much, much better with their highlights, but they tend to clip uh, information in the shadows. So what I recommend is that you always shoot a, just a little bit brighter than you think you need to. Now, if you look right here at the bottom, you'll see this little number that says 0703. Now, what I prefer to do is like, let's like my shutter speed is pretty high here. Oops, I hit the wrong thing. My shutter speed is pretty high here, but what I actually like, you know, let's just say I'm shooting at a decent shutter speed, like 160. Now, and you know, let's say like a decent aperture of, uh, what's a good aperture that I like? Let's just say I'm shooting at like 5.6 cause that's generally what I shoot for the fashion. And you know, like you can see it just says zero, zero. Like now that's just properly exposed. But what I notice is that with Sony cameras, I'm probably not going to be able to get information in the shadows. Like once something is black and I want to make it a bit brighter, that information is gone. So what I actually do is, and these cameras are great with ISO. I'll actually boost the ISO to 6,000 where, or, you know, like, okay, let's just say I'll go to 25,600. And now I'm getting a two stops over. And now what I find is even if I'm two stops over, I can make it darker and recover the information in the highlights, but I can't recover the information in the shadows. So generally for video and photo, always, always shoot a little bit brighter than you need to because you can recover your highlights but you cannot recover your shadows. And it, I would hate for you guys to be like, ah, it's so bright out, so I'll shoot a little bit darker. And you're like, dang it, I lost all my information in the shadows. So always shoot a little bit brighter because the Sony sensors tend to favor highlights. They have a ton of dynamic range in the highlights, but they'll lose stuff in the shadows. So I hope that tip helped. And to be honest, that's a tip that's kind of really helped me make better images. So I hope that helped. And let me know if there's other things you guys are curious about that I can answer for you. Oh, and actually another thing, guys, just quickly want to mention, uh, I wanted to give you guys what the best ISO is. So I find for photos, I can go anywhere up to like 25,000 and I'm totally fine. I will usually not try to shoot photos over 20,000, but with photos, because of like light, programs like Lightroom and Photoshop, you can really do some magical stuff with it. But for video, what I tend to do is I'll shoot at 12,800 because I know I can recover it. But generally I find what I'll do is 6400 is like a pretty happy medium. I know that's really, really high compared to most camera brands, but 6400, you'll get a really decent image and I'll try not to go over 10,000. And if I have to go to 12,000, sure. But 6400, 8,000 is a very, very happy place uh, to be when it comes to video. 
and you get a lot of dynamic range and uh, it just you get like a lot of information i try not to shoot video on a super low iso like 200 because what i find is i'm generally clipping information and then when i'm in when i try to grade the image uh for video i find that the that the skin tones get a little mushy the highlights aren't where they should be the colors look weird and so generally i will never shoot this camera below uh 12,600 iso and 25 3200 iso that's like the that's usually like my bread and butter range and if i have to go higher like in a, a nighttime scenario between 64 and 8,000. And uh, if you guys know anything about the newer cameras that Sony release, the base ISO for most of these cameras is somewhere like 1600 ISO. So these cameras are good at 1600 ISO, like completely clean. That's where they are naturally in camera. So do not be afraid to shoot high ISO, ISO on these cameras. And that goes for the uh, A6000 line or the A7 line. These cameras are fantastic at high ISOs. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us on our Sony a6000 tutorial. I hope you guys got a lot of value out of it. If you're interested in this camera whatsoever, be sure to check out the link in the description down below for the absolute best pricing on this camera. And if you have any questions about this camera whatsoever, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll make sure to go back to every single one of you. As always, like and subscribe for future content. Until next time, guys.